Lee's uh, book is complex. Sometimes I want to illuminate certain parts so and make it clearer. So I'm decided to do, take his the charts that are in his books and illuminate them a little bit by putting them in to uh, PowerPoint slides and enhancing it a little bit by combining uh, a couple of uh, portions of the book. So um, if you remember part, the end of part four, he was just going into the demographic cycle and uh, he was describing the uh, the uh, four parts, the four um, parts of the demographic cycle. Um, A, B, C, and D. And they're correlating um, then the four uh, correlating uh, functions of each part of the demographic cycle. And uh, if you remind, if you remember, he described. Uh, I'll give you a brief description of all four. Okay, if you remember with the uh, the uh, stage A, where um, it we call the primitive or the base or the medieval uh, portion that existed before 1700, before the uh, four great revolutions. Um, where it, which is the most stable we said where the birth rate is high the death rate is high and the numbers are stable and most of the people are below the age of 18 and that's the, in the primitive society uh, at, where man existed for yons so, um, stage, stage B is where we get to begin to see the change where the effect of the uh, revolutions of the West, western civilization revolutions took their effect okay um, because of uh, uh, the the agricultural revolution, where you can produce food to pr pr feed people, and uh, the it, medical and sanitation advances, where you could preserve life to keep people from getting sick and dying, um, you have you have a high birth rate because now you can feed them, uh, and you have the the death rate falling because now. Um, you get rid of a lot of the, the diseases that people that took people's lives uh, before they got old and it, it causes the numbers to rise um, the second thing is you get uh, most the age distribution of most of the people in this particular cycle are in their prime this he calls this the um, pop the demographic explosion cycle this is where uh, the civilization really starts to expand it really starts to reach out because it needs more land and more materials and uh, since most of the since most of the women are in their childbearing prime from 18 to 45 they produce more children and since uh, you have a lot of men that are also in their prime they can actually go out and fight they can bear arms and they can go out and you know basically conquer and overwhelm other people and gather more land and more resources okay the third demographic is what I call the restabilized where the birth rate begins to fall because people become comfortable and the death rate remains low notice that it's stable because you have a low birth rate and a low death rate and that causes the stability and uh, in this one, in this age distribution, most of the people are middle aged. They're, you know, between then it was between 30 and 60. And, and I call this the restabilized uh, portion. This before it starts decaying. And when um, quickly wrote the book, this is where the modern world or the modern Western world was. It was it had conquered. It was still powerful and it was stable. You know, in, in other words, the it was a little bit more peaceful. This was the time after 1945, um, where the population pressure wasn't as high. And then he goes. Then you see the uh, the other side. You know, and we're gonna I'm gonna attach a video, um, a link to a YouTube video about that, and it's exploring the uh, Japanese. Uh, uh, Japan, the Japanese geriatric society, where, where this, where they're in the stage D, along with Europe, but they're, they seem to have reached it a little faster than Europe has, 
where the birth rate is very very low and the death rate is high because the uh, you have a lot of seniors you have a lot of elderly and so then their numbers are sl are slowly declining uh, and you have like you said you have a lot of old people and not enough young people to take care of them and I call this the uh, geriatric cycle where where the uh, where the, where the population has passed its peak and start to decline. You know, this is an interesting chart because it's at the crux of of what of of following Western civilization. It's at the crux of how the core moves. Uh, we have the diffusion of the demographic cycle. You know how how the you know these um, four great revolutions or uh, the the, the parts of uh, Western civilization spread out and diffuse away from the core and you can see how they how they advance through each particular cycle you know and he put it like every 50 years they advance to each particular cycle and you can see how when how it started in Britain you know or, or Western Europe how it started in Britain and they reached the the, the explosive uh, the explosion population explosion cycle first, and it was they dominated the world or dominated Western civilization, and then it moved. Uh, uh, France got it the next fifty years, and you can see they dominated. As you can see, as 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 the civil as the parts of the civilization explode, they start to dominate. And then, you know, then they slowly start to, to stabilize. And we can see the pattern from one to the other. Uh, in, after 1944, they leave out the United States, you know. But the thing is, after 1944-45, you can see the Soviet explosion. And they, 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 along with the United States, conquered Germany. And they, you know, it, it, when he wrote it, and quickly wrote it the uh, the Russians and the Americans both co owned or both both co ruled the world one you know one half to, to the other and this is the prediction this is the prediction that we're talking about that may or may not come true is the rise of, of Asia because they're the last to get the uh, the the parts of Western civilization and they're the last uh, people to actually get the uh, the 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 what they call the population explosion, the demographic explosion. Not necessarily in China because because China had so many people and it was artificially restricted and they were already large. But India, you know, um, a lot of East Asian countries like uh, Ceylon or you know uh, Pakistan, those kind of places. They started to get this particular uh, explosion in this particular cycle. You know, you can also include uh, Africa and Latin America in that. You know, they're just now we they're just now starting to uh, gather the the uh, pieces of Western civilization and form it into something, and they're developing and they're getting the same explosion that Western civilization did. You know, you you notice that. Uh, uh, America is importing a lot of people from Latin America as labor and the same thing with uh, Europe is importing Asians and um, Islamic people into uh, Europe to work because they are falling below replacement okay our last slide is the development se sequence and here you see the seven different traits important traits of a Western civilization and their development and in the order of which they attain these different traits as you can see these are in order and organic and Quigley says when you receive or adopt these traits out of order since they're not organic and since they one doesn't follow naturally follow the other you're going to get a different result and sometimes they're going to be troublesome you know, you can see how, you know, uh, Western Europe uh, had its ideology first. 
It's uh, revol security of revolutions and weapons second, which had security, had the agricultural revolution where they can actually grow food for a large number of people that that gathered, uh, that uh, released labor, that went into the industrial revolution. Uh, once you had all these people together, you had to keep them healthy. Um, so when you had a revolution in sanitation and medicine, uh, and then uh, when you, uh, the ability to take care of a bunch of people, you got a demographic explosion. And then the, to link them all together, you had a revolution in transportation. Here you can see how it's out of order of which of of the uh, of uh, of the development in Western Europe, and it had different effects. And he said one effect of having these you know Asia and in in the Soviet Union re receiving these traits out of order um, the first thing is when they received weapons okay uh, they received they received the uh, weapons technology before the Industrial Revolution and the agricultural revolution which are which are here so when they received weapons uh, that late um, the common man couldn't afford it as as they could in um, here in, in in Western Europe. So since he he goes through the uh, he goes through a, a the spiel of how the weapons were affordable and cheap and they could be acquired uh, as 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 the common man could acquire it just as well as the government could. So the government could not oppress them. They couldn't force them to do anything. Whereas here since it was in reverse the common man couldn't afford the weapons and the government could so the government could oppress them and you had that's so here so here you had an authoritarian um, government and here you had a democratic government just by the fact of how they how 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 they received weapon technology and how the industrial revolution and the agricultural revolution happened. And he said there's another point that the sequence of the agricultural, industrial, and transportation revolution made it possible for Europe to have a rising standard of living and very little rule oppression since the agricultural revolution provided food and thus labor for the industrial uh, industrialism and for transport facilities. So, but Asia got these backwards. They got not backwards, but in different order. So, so the the labor could be obtained from because you could keep more people alive because the sanitary medical revolution uh, uh, caused a, the the demographic explosion. But the labor couldn't be fed, you know, uh, with excess food because you didn't have it because you got this before this and that so the only way you could feed the all the people that you got for the for the industrial revolution is from oppressing the uh, the peasants so the the only the only food you could get was go down and, and take it from the present the peasants and send it to the city which caused a bunch of revolts caused a bunch of uh, dead peasants you know, if you look at the five-year, uh, the five-year plan of of Stalin, you know, uh, you can see the oppression that he had to to, uh, to to do to force the people, or force the peasants to grow food for an industrial revolution that they couldn't afford. The second thing is, is that uh, the the revolution in transportation and communications. Okay, this doesn't come out of nowhere. Okay, you have to have steel, you have to iron and steel for railroads, and you got to have copper for copper wires, and you have to be able to, you have to have an industry to produce this. But since they got the industrial revolution before this came, the only way that other countries could acquire it is by either borrowing money or taking the money from the peasants. So while other parts of the of the world borrowed money and became indebted to Europe to into Europe the Russians and the Asians didn't like to be in debt so guess where they got 